and uh, well, the left-hand side. Oh, big crash! Big crash coming off the, the roundabout there. Okay, and they're still going down. One rider from Team Dimension Data has uh, continued to pick themselves up. Oliver Nason being delayed. Yeah, not again. I think it's Cavendish has hit the uh, hit the barrier well, coming off the roundabout. That's almost done for the entire Astana team as well. Uh, I think it's the last back possibly. It's Cavendish once again who has hit the deck. Now what's happened here, just a switch and he's hit the central reservation there, his bike's gone and he's absolutely catapulted over the handlebars and landed once again extremely heavily. Well he hit that heavy, fingers really crossed heavy. he is okay, but uh, taking a lot of riders down with him and this is the problem, position absolutely crucial. Philippe just looking across. Oh, the there's a crash on the right hand side of the road. It's taken down a couple of tricks. Like afraid of riders. That's Contador. Contador himself, and that's without, that's outside the three kilometer uh, marker, which would denote a neutralization of any time distances or time gaps. Should there be an accident? It's not Molimer as well, is it, who's been gapped there? Certainly, Contador is going to be losing time, and a bit of a chase involved as he gets on the radio, asks for help. They'll have one roundabout to go over, but it's pretty much straight all the way to the finish line from here. Oh. There's the flat region, a big crash into the barriers. Loads of riders have gone down there. I think all the sprinters were through and clear, so the bunch sprint will probably still happen with all the main contenders, but that was a heavy fall. Yeah, I think Kittle must have gone down. There's a well, one of the Dimension Data riders, is that Cavendish on the ground? It is? A, no, it's no, not. No, I think Cavendish is there. Was it uh, Caleb Ewan potentially? But well, uh, I'm fairly sure Cavendish is still there. Greipel certainly riders is there. On the, riders on the radio trying to find out where their men are and who has been affected. There's Quintana. He's safely unaffected by that. Well, here we go. Coming into the last few hundred metres now. It is Drew Palmer, FTJ, looking after last year's winner, Arnaud Demar. What can Demar do? Can he have back-to-back -back wins? Ackerman there in the white jersey of German champion. On his wheel, Clemence Inchoy. Now moving up on the outside of the red is Jesper Steuben looking after. It is uh, John Degenkolb, but Degenkolb's a little bit too far back, still about 400 metres to go. Riders opening up on the right hand side now as well. The riders are spread across the road. Benjamini is there in the centre, is Ackerman. But it has been tell concept leading things out. Jakobsen is there. Look at the big crash in the centre. Oh, a big crash there. Who is now going to take this? It is Ackerman. Ackerman's looking like he's stolen a march. Jakobsen is Martinelli on the right hand side. Oh, I think Jesper Steuben is in second position. Has Ackerman got enough? Ackerman keeps going, the German champion. Porter has got to take it. Ackerman takes the win. What a win now, but a disastrous finale for many. No doubt about the winner of the Brussels Cycling Classic, Pascal Ackerman of Bora Hansgrohe. Oh, little stack there. So one of the Movistar riders has hit the deck quite badly. That's Visconti. Just, Visconti's just come off. Just rejoining the action as well. Is his bike working? Gets a little bit of a help from a friendly spectator. So what's happened here? Just, just catch a glimpse of it happening on the left there. Oh, right over the handlebars. Caught the curb, hmm. but a nice soft landing. Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go head over the heels, you might as well make it into a sand pit. Greipel still combining his time, keeping his powder dry. Oh, and Matthews has disengaged from his lead out man. Here we go then, road spreads wide, dead centre of proceedings. It's Lamprey versus Lotto. It's Greipel at the moment versus Modolo. Greipel going to go for this. Here comes Movistar and with an option as well, picking it up. It's got to go now. Oh, we've got a fall right on the line. We said it was a pinch. They've got to keep their senses about them. Greipel's out of this by the looks of things, is he? No, not a bit of it. He goes to the barriers. He he picks it up, Greipel is the gorilla, and he's facing himself upon everybody. Absolutely everybody is an also man when Greipel's in this kind of mood. Wow. There's some very uncomfortable looking riders, and that looked like a terrible injury with a distended, dislocated elbow by the looks of things. Not what you want to see. There is Alberto Contador who got caught out, so he'll be given the same time as uh, those who finished ahead of him. No gaps declared because of the crash in the last three. Here's your approach. Um, Andre Greipel almost invisible in the mob right now. And there's the fall. It was a nasty one. They had to keep their focus. Others, well, were wondering what on earth was going on. Look at the power of the drive as he hits the line and takes the win he's been hunting. Super stuff by Greipel. Greipel, victorious. He loves winning. Well, uh, giant Alpacine rider has gone down, and uh, so too has uh, Yamamoto from Nippo Vini Vantini. So those two riders are 
Oh, Dan, sorry, that's not Yamamoto. That is, uh, yeah. Zilioli, try and get a number from the Giant Appasine rider. Well, it was uh, Zilioli who forced the other two riders to uh, go over their handlebars since he hit the deck and they had to no road whatsoever to avoid him. I think that might be Albert Timmer, the rider from the Giant Alpacine. And there's Jack Bobridge as well, the Australian national champion from Trek Segafredo. Clutching his ribs. They just ran out of anywhere to go, didn't they, Timmer and Bobridge? And ultimately, all they could do was pull on the brakes for uh, risk of running over the Italian rider on the deck. And uh, that meant that they just catapulted over their handlebars and into the undergrowth, almost in unison. Oh, but look at Alexander Christoph. He is the man to beat here. From Popple being brought to the front as well by Trek. Oh, we've right us down. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. You can see it happening. Now, this is interesting. With Roubaix to come at the weekend, who's got caught up with this? Maxime Daniel, the Azure Desert rider down. Elia Viviani crashing for Sky. 81 there is Tom van Asperk, who's standing up and OK. Tom van Asperk involved in that initial crash. Set for Marke, OK there as well, which uh, going ahead to Roubaix, something that the team will look to see. This was the incident that led to the crash. Elbows. It was the rider from NL Yom, Lotto NL Yombo. Oof. He's that rider's foot. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Tinkoff Saxo, is that Jesper Hansen? Yes. Yeah, it is. This was the restart problem. Oh, oh no! Oh. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. That, in fact, it's the medical car who's opened his doors, not seen Hansen coming, and he may well cost him time off the bike here. We shall see. Ooh! Well, there we go. The first moment when Stephen Kreisweik has a real battle on his hands. Kreisweik is down. What's the problem with his bike now? Certainly the mechanic is straight out. That's the neutral service mechanic. And they're looking at his bike. And this is a huge moment for the Giro d'Italia. Is it slipping away from Stephen Kreisweik? Of course, he's got minutes to spare. But their seconds are ticking over. And his confidence will have been rattled. He might well have hurt himself. He, at the first, one of the first corners on this descent, has come to grief. And once again he has to stop, and uh, they sweep past him on the road. That was Kozatiev who was helping Vincenzo Nibali on that uh, late latter sections of the climb. He's back on his bike. Is his bike in working order, and how's his legs, and how is his head, more importantly, and how much time has he lost? Well, just as we were saying that he hasn't put a foot wrong in this Giro d'Italia, the only weakness... Oh, oh, that was a nasty, nasty Straight crash. Straight onto his back, and he's flipped right over his handlebars. That will hurt if it, haven't done him, if it hasn't even done him more damage than that. That was a heavy, heavy fall. Oh, crash. Crash. Oh, now, number of riders down here. Let's have a look. Vilja Trestina with one on the floor there from Movistar. That's not Mikel Landa. There is the Sky Rider, who's just avoided that. I think it's Chris Froome himself, isn't it? It is Froome. Just manages There's Polance from UAE Team Emirates. Uh, he goes over now, and look at Moretzko falling there, and he gets a kick in the head. And oh, crash. And another rider goes down, and he brings down, well, a whole bunch of riders down, and that was close to the front. That was close to the front. There's a lot of Sudal rider just dusting himself down. Who has gone down? How did it happen? There's another Israel Cycling Academy. Now, uh, uh, BMC have got, I think, Patrick Bevin is down on the ground. What's happening here? Gaviria, Gaviria is down too. Now, was that as a result? Surely he was further up and away from that. No, I don't it was see. Directly, it was very close to the front. And it's actually Gaviria who might just touch a wheel of Mats Ricchesi. And Sagan obviously came down because Sagan was right on the wheel. Sagan just about gets through. And it's going to be Modolo in the end who's going to be led out. Modolo about to come off the wheel of Bonifacio. Oh, and there's a huge crash. Down goes Ewan, but here comes Kittel. Ewan is down and a handful of sprinters with him. It's Modolo who's going to go. Kittel on the left-hand side. Modolo through the centre. It's every man for himself as Peluki comes through to take the win. It's Yam cycling on stage two. Matteo Peluki taking advantage of the chaos. And it is a horrible, horrible crash that took down Caleb Ewan. That's taken and out a whole other host of riders as well. Disaster on stage two. Wow, incredible scenes there at the finish. 
and it looked like Caleb Ewan just got caught, whether his handlebars got caught underneath someone, he seemed to be the first rider to go down, and in that close proximity, well, it just went from gutter to gutter, didn't it? And it stopped the entire peloton behind. But, well, that man there, Paluki, he didn't know what was happening behind him. He'd have, surely he would have heard it, but you do not look round, you do not take any notice. He just had the line ahead of him. He just spotted that line. He picked his moment. And there oh, we go. We had it. First crash of this round of Vlander, I'm afraid. It's a rider from BMC. Now, let's look around because, of course, BMC have the pre race favourite. Oh, Set for Marker is involved. Set for Marker thankfully looks all right. He's checking his mechanical stuff. He himself. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Loads of riders down, and Oliver Narsen's one of them. Arnold Imar looked as though he might have been the first to go there. Steen Bevolder's involved as well. Narsen cannot believe it. And that positioning well, the battle was won oh, by Arnold Imar. And we've got a crash at the back. We've got riders at the back. Oh, no. Oh, it's Docker. Mitch Docker, and he's in the barbed wire. Oh, no. 